and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Jarvan Tarek. That's right, we got another cool combination with Jarvan. This one with another support champion. Last time we did Shen, which was a good support champion and a deck that turned out very well. This time we're heading on over to Targon for Tarek as our four mana support champion. Um, I'm pretty excited about this one. Because not only do we have like a, you know some good Demacia units and some really cool spells, but we have a really cool combo in here. So what we're doing, besides having Tarek and Jarvan together, we're going to have Tarek with Golden Ages. This is kind of like the, the real selling point to the deck, I think. So if we, like, let's, let's imagine we don't have the attack token, right? It's our opponent's uh, round that they have the attack token. But we have a Tarek in play. What we can do is we can cast the Golden Ages on the Tarek. And um, therefore, put a, put a barrier on Tarek and rally so we get to attack again, or attack for the first time this round. And so then we attack with Tarek, and of course Tarek has the support copy the last spell that you cast um, only on me this round. And you know Golden Ages didn't target anything else, so then it will copy Golden Ages over to whatever Tarek is supporting, and then boom, give that a barrier and also rally again. So, you, you know, we can have two attacks there. So basically we get to have double rally with Tarek and Golden Ages. That's pretty awesome. Even just like on a turn that we already attacked, like maybe we already had like Tarek attack and we attacked and everything, and then they did stuff, and then they do whatever. And then after, you know, post-combat, after we attack, we can still play this and then attack two more turns that same, <laughs> that same round. So yeah, Tarek with Golden Ages, pretty excited about that combination. You can have Tarek support Jarvan also if you have if you have Tarek on the far right and then you know you attack, you put in Jarvan with this the six mana, how Jarvan comes into play, like burst speed attacking. Tarek will support Jarvan um, on the side also if you wanted to have any of these things help support Jarvan. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. So we're gonna have as far as other spells for Tarek, we're gonna have like Pill Cascade, Sharp Sight. Um, I'm playing one prismatic barrier because I just wanted another one another card that didn't cost four because all these great There's all these great protection spells where they all cost four which can be kind of awkward how that's more uh, Than how much spell mana you can have so like but we're gonna keep one like repost one bastion one astral protection Because like in situations all those cards are just incredible um, But then we'll have our three golden ages also um, But I wanted one that didn't cost four so we got one prismatic barrier Just have to have a hush I think I think hush is just too good not to play so we got one of those but then, yeah, two mana spot. We got Pill Cascade, Sharp Sight, um, as other things to copy over. And then we got another support with Mentor the Stones. We have Mentor the Stones with Mountain Goat that can make the gems. The gems are really good at leveling up Tarek as well. Um, and then one just Bright Steel Formation at the top end because this card's really powerful. I was I was going to play three Mentor the Stones, but decided to cut the third Mentor the Stones for a Bright Steel Formation. So we'll we'll see how this card does. We'll see if you know we think that maybe it would be better as a Mentor the Stones as we play the games. But I. Uh, expect this card to pull a lot of weight. All right, but anyway, let's get to it. Let's see how Jarvan, Tarek, Golden Ages, how it will do. We'll go play our five games in ranked. Tom Kench, Sir Raka. So one thing I don't like about Tom Kench, Sir Raka for this is they are a Hush deck, and I don't really want to face Hush in particular. Um, this gold, they don't really respond to Golden Ages though, so like that could be a really useful card. Um, so let's mulligan all of this, keep that, try to have some units. <laughs> we are going to need some units. It looks like our deck's all spells, but we're, we're 24 and 16. So we have 24 units, 16 spells. So 60% units, 40% spells. Even though it looks like it's the other way around from just looking at these games. We'll see what they do. Okay. It's it's a pretty terrible attack for me into Hush. So I think I think I'm just going to pass also. Like I have, I have all these combat tricks in hand. I don't think there's really a reason for me to get blown out. You're covered. 
Yeah, very glad they didn't have Star Spring for sure. Oh no! Ah. Uh. You you Where you off to? Where are you, spirit? Should have stayed home, pal. Oh, you wee scruff. Where are you off to? Take heart. Endures. I think having both sharp side and pill cascade, I think my Terra is safe. Wow. That I just definitely feel like they have hush, right? Like I feel like if I if I go golden ages, they hush. I think I will wait on that. Shatter them. Go, floating crystal. Unyielding. This is kind of my best play against Tosh. I like just spreading out. You know, like, we don't want to just, like, make one thing, like, really good. Yep. There they were, sitting on Hush. I think that's a win for us that, uh, you know, how good Hush is that Hush was only used to um, kill a little Mentor of the Stones. I think that that's a win for us. For how how valuable that card is with leveled up Taric and with, you know, barriers with Golden Ages and all that kind of stuff. Now, I feel better when you feel better. don't have to worry about, you know, obviously you've got to worry about Star Spring and... All this stuff still, but I think that's that was a win for us. I think. For silver, I talk. For gold, I it. Stars fall. Take heart. Live with purpose. No further. The mountain endures. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll get the attack token again. We look after our own. Yeah, I'm worried about that star spring. But this is a pretty sweet combo. Why would you not block the five? Oh, I should play the Mountain Goat. <laughs> like that. A little late, because I'm I'm obviously trying to open attack here. Oh, no, no, I didn't want to actually cast it now. Oh, that was some lag right there. That was some lag. I didn't want to actually cast it right then. It's a big responsibility to shepherd stocks. Now I don't have Jarvan plus Golden Ages. All right, well, looks like I'm not. Looks like I'm not playing Jarvan, then. Shatter, then. The steel is yours. Never 
Yeah, that was a series of events right there. Right? There we go. We get two more attacks. Man, that that felt pretty awesome. Tarek plus Golden Ages. That was pretty awesome. All right, just one minute for this prediction. Sivir and LeBlanc. Not nearly as cool as our LeBlanc Ezreal deck that we just got done playing. But, oh well. Okay, one, two. Keep both of those. Um, Jarvan, this does seem like a good Jarvan matchup. Like, you know, attacking, challenging something big. This does, yeah, this does seem like a good Jarvan matchup. I think I'll mulligan the Golden Ages for now. Kind of look for, like, Taric or Pill Cascade or something like that. The desert by my I guess I just take this trade. I don't love it, but... I think I'd rather have this trade than just, like, take two damage and then have that thing block my Mountain Goat. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't love that. I, obviously, the... The Bright Steel Formation is our worst card, because like this game is probably going to be over by turn 9, so that, that was the worst card for us to draw. See what we see. That's unfortunate. So yes, yeah, so I know I know that the, the Sia in LeBlanc is silent. I, yeah, I've been told that like LeBlanc is French and that like the C is silent, but then I've also been told that um, that while that's kind of true, there's there's no like France in the um, in the Riot world, whatever this is called, your Rune Terra, I guess, and that um, that basically everybody pronounces the C, and even the developers at Riot pronounce the C and so that it's just fine just to pronounce the C. Yeah, the English, like the English way, the, yeah, whenever you, if you do like Google Translate, the English way to pronounce that word is with the C, with, is by saying LeBlanc. Like that's how you pronounce it for the, the that's the English pronunciation of that. Mystical levitation requires concentration. The French French way to say it is without the C, but if you pronounce that in English, the C is is supposed to be in there. Um, I guess I challenge that thing. Pretty bad turn for me. Like, I guess I'm just gonna go with this Golden Ages. Um, even though, like, it'd, it'd be really nice to save Golden Ages for Jarvis, but maybe I do just save Golden Ages for Jarvis. Maybe I just take five and then just, like, next turn, you know, maybe just do, like, a gem or two this turn. And then next turn, like, a t attack and put Jarvan into play and have Dar Jarvan challenge the Sivir. Yeah. Let's play a gem. Danger pays. Oh, that thing has the spell shield. Why do I always forget about that stupid spell shield on that card? It's like the spell shield and this quick attack together. I like always forget about that. But I thought about that with the hush. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't hush that card because of the spell shield. And then I just play the. Uh... That lance is gonna be a hell of a payday. If you mean it'll cost. Yeah, I even thought like, okay, well, I can't hush because of the spell shield, and then I just go with the single combat. But I don't know. It's just like the the picture of like the spell shield and the quick attack together. I like. I don't know, it's hard. For, it's like my brain doesn't recognize the. Um. 
just gonna attack with this. It's like my brain doesn't recognize the spell shield with those two together. But yeah, that I definitely wish I would have just played the Golden Ages, obviously, against you know if that was gonna be the plan. Three still kills everything. So I guess my plan is hush, sharp sight. Played that Golden Ages last turn, or like that turn with the Fleet Feather Tracker, or you know, not threw away my single combat for nothing. Well, I would have done either of those. Would have made life easier. I know, right? We had a question, where's Tarek? I know, right? Tarek, that's why, I, actually I said this, I guess, before we started recording and stuff, but I think if we could choose one card to have in our opening hand every game, it would be Tarek. I think Tarek's the best card in our, our deck. Our deck is a very good Tarek deck. These are some nice whispered words by them. But the the slow speed barrier has really hurt us, right? Like if this was like Repost earlier, like our Fleet Feather Tracker would have killed, you know, like Repost... This not being repost, like, um, that really hurt us earlier. I don't think we are going to be winning this game. With them drawing all, like, they have, yeah, they have just too much, too many cards, too much stuff. It just doesn't do anything to... Play Golden Ages and attack for sake. It just does six damage to them, right? Like it just doesn't do anything. All that glitters is mine. Yeah. All right. Sometimes Golden Ages is amazing, like the first game, and sometimes if it was just repost, you would have done a lot better. But I threw away that single combat and it really cost me that game. Braum Vladimir. Braum Vladimir is a deck that just always looks great whenever I play against it. <laughs> I don't know if I've I don't know if I've beaten this deck since the ex since the uh, new expansions come out. I think I'm like 0 and 5 against it or something like that. They just always have Braum, always have Vladimir, always have scar grounds and then combat spells and it's like impossible to beat. Yeah, rep yeah. Basically, Golden Ages is like the super high variance Repost, right? Like Repost, much better in, in combat and stuff. But like Golden Ages, you can do some crazy stuff with Tarek with. Let me show you what I can do. And no, I do not want to attack and let them Elixir of Iron or and completely blow me out. How do we keep on drawing this bright? All right, maybe this bright steel formation is not worth it. Oh no, not that card. It's always that card. <laughs> Thanks, Mentor of the Stones. Thanks for not showing up last turn. Appreciate you, pal. Yeah, it could be Jarvan the Third instead of Bright Steel Formation. It's just when you play like Demacia Mirrors, like this, this wins like the Demacia Mirror, and maybe this card will win this one if if we can slow the opponent down enough. Never 
No, it's not. It's not bad because because we draw it. It's it's bad because it costs nine mana, and usually this game like I'm worried that the game will be decided before turn nine. Man. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> this deck's just incredible. It's just always Scargrounds, Braum, Vladimir. I feel like if once I once I pick up this deck and play it, I'm never gonna have Scargrounds, Braum, and Vladimir. I'm gonna have everything else. Oh man, that deck's incredible. is unbeatable. I think that's the best deck I've ever seen in my life. It's like, it's just they get to just choose. <laughs> they get to look at all forty of their all forty cards in their deck. All right, what card's the best in this situation? All right, we got it. All right, you're obviously gone now. Prismatic barrier. I think prismatic barrier should be just fine in this matchup. So, we need a cheaper unit. There we go. Thank you. Probably make that attack. Kill the two one. I bring clarity. Noxus removal. Come on. After the battle of the Stop. My shield is yours. Well, this is our way to attack with Jarvin. Try to kill Sejuani with Jarvin. Protect and strike. For my father, the king, ours is but to do and die. <laughs> okay, this right. This Jarvin just does not this this Jarvin's just not not working out. My opponent keeps on having like these little one damage things that just keep killing my Jarvins. This is not working out for a six mana card. Sure. Not know the name Laurent. 
Really? How about that? And my opponents, my opponents are living the life. They are living the life. These last two. I make one mistake with the single combat. And then we just have two opponents have perfect hands. So we're one and three. Yeah. Yeah, like the... The best card in the Jarvan spot is easily Fiora, so yeah, like this this should be a Fiora deck. Alright, anyway, Azir Callista. Please get out of here. Bright Steel Formation. So I was asking if like Quinn would be better than Jarvan, but yeah, like realistically. Like the Golden Age's Tarek is really cool. You know, we wanted to play Jarvan with this one. But realistically, if we just play like the same cards that just played uh Basically play Fiora instead of Laurent Protégé, and then play like Scythria instead of Jarvan. That that would inc that would make our deck much better if we just made that like those two small little changes. Yeah, you've been having a lot of success with the the Shen Jarvan deck. Yeah, me uh, same. Like I I played that one in like the Gauntlets last weekend and yeah i had a, a lot of success with the shen the shen version that deck's really good um kind of the difference between this one and that one is river shaper right like that's the big difference with those two is they get they get river shaper river shaper pretty good Break their spirits and their souls. All right, good. No blighted caretaker. It's a good sign. If I can not have my Taric or my Protege die this next turn, like this turn, the next turn we're gonna have a very good turn. Ugh, yuck. Now eight. No attacks. Alright, so I'm not going to be able to play Golden Ages next turn, looks like. Or I just take 11, go to 5. So let's see, how am I killing this Callista? So I'm going to need... No, 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 no. We, we definitely can... We If, if I trade... Tarek for Callista, I can't win this game. Tarek is the card that can win this game for me. Okay, that's interesting. That means I don't get to Golden Ages. So I have to get Golden Ages next turn. It's a six mana. So I only have one spell. Yeah, Callista's gonna level up. Woo! Good. I like that card. That card will give me some time. I've got your back. I have to use the sharp sight. Protect and strike. So I can kill a level up Callista. I guess I might as well do this. Because they're going to, you know, I assume that they're going to block the Taric with the Hapless Aristocrat, level up the Callista. Now that will kill that. Try to keep this Protégé alive next turn, Golden Ages. Level up Taric, attack multiple times, kill a bunch of stuff. Yeah, we're close to dead. We're close to dead. But trading trading Taric and Callista last turn, we would, we would definitely be dead. That's not good for me. Derek's my only shot. Like these, these little cards aren't aren't beating 
like, you know, like we're not beating the rest of the stuff they have with these little things. With Overwhelm and Spell Shield. I pass, do they pass? To protect all. Probably not. Ours is soldiers of Demacia. Stand with me. I don't think I can risk it though. Demacian, fight for your king to preserve beauty and protect all life. With me. I need one more mana. They got four cards. Are they able to go wide enough? That's bad sign. That's a bad sign. Sharima never fell. It only awaited my return. Yeah, I mean I yeah, that's true. Last last turn I played like the barrier to protect against that six four overwhelm, but yes, Jarvan also had barrier and, and hard casting Jarvan would have put me in a better position. Did I, that was the wrong play by me. To the flag! Don't really know why they wouldn't just attack. Would did the Jarvan did the Jarvan level up whenever they had their four like after that they had their four one block my Tarek. Is that is that what caused the Jarvan to level up? So that if that's the case, then Jarvan would go into five three with barrier, and I couldn't have I couldn't have a three power barrier block the six four. And survive? Could I? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, this is a really detailed game. I know it's that's that's a really yeah, it's a good point. There are so many little things in each game with Rune Terra. It does make life difficult. I don't really understand why they didn't just attack. But obviously, killing this Azir would get rid of two things because right, it would get rid of the Sand Soldier that they would make also. Yeah, so. But you never know. Maybe they'll forget to attack. Okay, they did not forget to attack. So, I know we went 1 and 4, but I don't think our deck was very far off. I think that we, we ran into two opponents in round three and round four, the, both the Noxus and the Freljord decks, where their hands were just insane. They were just like top, you know, 5% hands, and they're just hands that are going to be beating everybody. And, you know, like those those kind of things happen. And, um, yeah, it was it was pretty silly, especially the game four, uh, but both those games. Uh, don't, don't really have any shame in losing, though. So we were, we were one and two in the other games. The uh, game two... I made a really big mistake with whenever whenever I played single combat. We had a we had a pretty bad hand with like we just didn't have anything to do in, in the mid game at all. We had basically like one drop and then Jarvan, then nine drop. Right? Like we just didn't have things to do in the middle. It was it was really rough. Um, but I, I made it I did single combat into a spell shield for no reason, and that single combat would have been really important to have access to later. So I, I messed that up. Um so, you know, like, that's my fault. And, you know, that last game, yes, I, I could have hard cast Jarvan. I don't know if that would have been able to change anything. 
but maybe. But um, Golden Aegis was really so. Uh, but basically, what I'm saying is that we we weren't that far off. Golden Aegis was really hit or miss. There was like the first game where it was absolutely incredible and um, and everything, and some 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 other times it was really good. But there was also a lot of times like where it was pretty poor, where you just really wish it was repost, um, where repost could have been. Um, something we could have played during combat and that plus three plus zero would have been really nice, but really, really just having during combat with it being slow speed. So it was pretty hit or miss. Jarvan, unfortunately, really didn't pull his weight. Jarvan, um, while Jarvan looks good with, in the Shen build where you have like river shaper in there also. And then in the Shen build, you also have the lifesteal barrier that helps you stay alive for a little bit longer game and everything. Jarvan did end up looking pretty poor here. Um, it was kind of that I just didn't have, I don't know, I didn't have like very good like mid game. And so a lot of times that we, we were just kind of like behind by the time we could get to Jarvan. We also, we had Jarvan early in our hand, basically every single game. I think, I think maybe all five games, uh, we had Jarvan in our hand very early in the game. And so, you know, when you have like your six mana card in your first couple of turns, that, that does make it more difficult to curve out. And so that's what we were, we experienced. We didn't draw our low cost units early in the game very often it was mostly just spells and jarvan but so we were behind most of the time and you know you jarvan not very good when you're behind um at least not as good and our opponents had amazing answers to barrier also and so it just really jarvan really didn't work out um but i i would want to keep trying this golden ages Terek because i do think that there's something there i think that there is like a lot of potential there um but i think that I think that Jarvan just doesn't really fit in this deck as well. I, I mentioned it during one of the games, but I think that um, to make to make this like Tarek is amazing, and Tarek with you know with Golden Age like this can be a really good Tarek deck. But to make this a better Tarek deck, while Jarvan is new and interesting and everything, I think that the best version of this deck probably doesn't have Jarvan has Fiora instead because we have we have all of these spells that are just amazing with Fiora. And so I, I think that this could be a... and Because, like, basically Golden Age is also amazing with Fiora. That was kind of a problem with Golden Age is whenever our other, like, main attacker being, like, like where we really want to Golden Age is Taric, that was really the only card that we really wanted to Golden Age was Taric. Maybe, like, Screeching Dragon later. But if you have, like, Fiora, that's cheaper. And then if you don't have Taric, you can still use this Golden Age on the Fiora. That would be very good, too. So I think that if, if you made this Fiora... And then played some, and then played some Scythria instead of the Jarvan. So you know you still basically take out the Protege, upgrade, upgrade from Protege to Fiora, and then replace some Jarvan with some Scythria. So you still have some top end cards. I think that would be better. The Bright Seal formation also just didn't work out. The games were too fast, and so I, I don't think you really need three of the Scythrias either. You can just play like two. I could go with Genevieve instead of Scythria. Where Genevieve with Golden Ages could be kind of nice, also. I'm not sure. I'm not sure with Scythria or Genevieve which one would be better. Um, maybe Genevieve because the Challenger. I'm not sure. Maybe Genevieve. All right. So then, then that would clear up two spots because I think that we with like basically the Taric, the Golden Ages, the Fiora, they can all have such a good top end that would clear up two spots for us. So we can have like a couple of more of some earlier stuff to to kind of help out. Um, or some, or some card advantage cards or, you know, like something else to kind of help out some early, you know, like we didn't, we were, uh, struggling with that. The options here, there's so many good options. Okay. So we put in, put in some extra cards to finish it out. So this is what we did. So, you know, we, we just finished talking about like the Fiora and the Genevieve putting those in. Um, and then we also freed up two slots by taking out, you know, the third Jarvan and the Brightsteel formation. Um, I want to put in a concert, you know, so I think a couple of cards just kind of change with Fiora. I want to put in Concerted Strike to be able to go along with Fiora. Um, I'm, I'm actually taking out one single combat from here to put in this Concerted Strike. Because um, we don't have, like, with single combat, we don't have, like, the largest units as far as uh, fighting goes. So Concerted Strike can help us kill some some larger units that sometimes you, you have to be able to kill larger stuff. And so I think that that, that can work out with uh, better here. I liked the single combat a little bit more with the Jarvan, where the Jarvan can come into play attacking with a barrier, and we can have the single combat. Um, but yeah, let's. so we're going to play one Concerted Strike. Also getting rid of... So then I'm also getting rid of the Astral Protection, um, just because I, th I think we had too many like four mana spells. 
Um, I wanted to put in the third Mentor the Stones to be able to help support Fiora. Be able, so Mentor the Stones can help grow the Fiora, um, or also like the gems can heal Fiora after Fiora kills smaller stuff. I think that could work out pretty well. So I want I want that third Mentor the Stones because we are reducing the amount of units. We had 24 last game, but since we're taking out those two from the top end, I put in one extra unit um, here in the mid game. We did see that we kind of struggled with units in the mid game. So we'll get another Mentor the Stones in here. And so we still have two free slots. And so for those free slots, some some guiding touches. Be able to heal our Nexus just a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit. Um, but then, of course, Guiding Touch just works great with both of our champions, whether you are using it on Taric and drawing multiple cards um, while doing some healing with Taric, or, of course, a Fiora that's taken some damage. Um, so it gives us a little bit more card draw to go along with the Pale Cascade and everything like that. Um, some other options we were talking about, like Star Shaping, could be pretty nice in here. We wouldn't have the other Celestial to Behold to go along with... Uh, the seven, eight, nine mana spells that require you to behold another celestial. But star shaping is really cool with Tarek of being able to copy it over, and that could also give you some some more um, nexus healing. Um, but but yeah, so that's that's what I uh, probably recommend. And I think I'm going to try this out um, in the next coming days. Try Golden Ages with Fiora with Tarek. Um, and everything like that so so give this version a try too but or or you could play the original version with jarvin your choice all right but that's it here for jarvin Tarek. uh so those y'all watching later on youtube feel free to uh leave those comments over there feel free to um you know let me know about anything about like this deck if you got some other upgrades or anything um you know if you try it out yourself you get you know feel free to leave that feedback about it and i would appreciate that but that's it here for jarvin Tarek. so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you for the next video